All right, you're going to love this one today. Some of you probably can identify with the disciples in this story. And we're going to start in Luke chapter 9, beginning in verse 54. The Bible says that when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Biblical justification here, just as Elijah did. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. Check this principle out. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So Jesus and his disciples go to the Samaritan village and, and they're not received. Uh, in a way, they're rejected. And so the disciples, you know, I mean, this is James and John. They're called the Sons of Thunder. Um, they're the Harley riding, leather chap wearing, Metallica music listening crew that um, just has that disposition, you know? I mean, they're fighters by nature. Some of you might be like that, you know? You're like, I'm not a lover, I'm a fighter. And so you're just ready. You're ready to rumble. You're always ready to rumble. You're ready to, you're, you're ready to get into it with people, especially if there's uh, like even the slightest opposition. And um, so some of you can probably identify with this. I think it's fascinating, you know, that as there's this resistance to Christ and to the disciples and to the message, you know, they're, this is, they're ready. They're ready to wipe these Samaritans out. And remember with me, you know, there was that, um, there was that prejudice, that, that national prejudice that uh, the people were carrying at the time. But, you know, I mean, these guys are not totally dumb. They give a biblical justification. They're like, hey, you know, I mean, this was what Elijah did, right? I mean, he was on top of Mount Carmel, and there was fire that was uh, poured out from heaven. And, and um, this, this seemed to be a unique miracle that Elijah was able to execute. And so they supplied the biblical justification um, to, for, for their wrath, for their penchant for justice. And Jesus' response to them is just so strong. You know, he says, you do not know what spirit you are of. And then principle, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Uh, so remember, these are just ways of thinking that are natural to, to humanity, right? The, the desire for vengeance, the desire for justice, the desire to see um, the justice of God poured out upon people who do not align themselves with him. And I think, you know, this isn't just true for the disciples then in this moment, but I think, you know, sometimes we have that tendency as well. We may not articulate it like this, but, you know, in the culture we're living in, where, when there's culture wars and people are on the other side, they're on the other team, and they're fighting against biblical principles that we know are best for our country and best for our families. Sometimes, sometimes when we're in that fight, you know, we're in that war, we're in the trenches, sometimes we lose sight of the heart of Christ and the heart that he desires us to have. And we start to think, you know, in a worldly way again. We start to think according to the kingdom of man and not the kingdom of God. And, you know, and, and we want to resolve the issue in the flesh. Hey, this would just be easier, God, if you would judge these people, you know, if you would wipe them out. You know, sometimes when Christians see um, difficulty or adversity hitting a non-believer that they might have been uh, tangling with, sometimes there's that automatic response. Well, this must be the justice or the judgment of God. Um, and while that might be the case, I don't think any of us can necessarily know if it is the case. I was listening to a very prominent atheist who died of cancer in the esophagus, and he'd used his mouth, you know, to really undermine the message of Christianity and to blaspheme God. And, you know, he was giving one of his last interviews, and he was talking about all the different reasons people believe that he had cancer in the esophagus. And and he said, you know, that among the Christian community, many were saying that this was the judgment of God, you know, that he had used that physical part of his body, that, that apparatus, you know, to undermine the message of the gospel. And as a consequence, God struck him with cancer of the esophagus. Now, listen, I mean, is that possibly true? Uh, maybe, but I don't think 
um, any of us are in a position to be able to de definitively say that, for one thing. And then in addition to that, what would be the purpose of that? Well, still, the purpose of that would be to draw that lost individual back to the gospel. Why would I say something like that? Because that's exactly what Jesus said. He says himself, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Hey, let's not forget. Let's not forget that in the heat of the battle, as we plant our flag on different culture, war issues, that the main message that we carry is one of salvation and not of destruction. One of rescuing people, not destroying people. This is why he came, even the person who is aligned as your adversary in the situation that you're dealing with, that person is a person that God wants to reach and rescue with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the heart that we're supposed to bear as believers. When we take the other route and we start to think like the world thinks, what ends up happening is we build walls between people and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, let's be filled with love today in those areas where we, our flesh might be wanting justice. Let's ask God to help us to desire salvation instead. And let's pray for and love our enemies even in the midst of the battle. Lord, we love you and we're thankful that you loved us. Some of us were, were blasphemers, God. Some of us were aligned against you and against your principles and, and yet you loved us. And so I pray that you would help us to love others in the same way that you have loved us in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day.